Welcome, Welcome to Jake and Trev Review Everything Live. I'm Trev. And I'm Jake. Welcome. Uh, this is the first first live show episode of uh, 2015. It's episode 64, Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64. Mega 64. It was, uh, it was, it was, you know, a landmark system, by all okay. accounts. Oh, absolutely. And this is the landmark episode, by all accounts. <laughs> As, as were all of the ones that preceded it. Um, so, here we are. Uh, it's, like I said, it's our first one of the new year. Took a couple of weeks off for uh, Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. uh, Christmas and New Year's lined up this year in that particularly pesky orientation. Wednesday was Christmas Eve, and then the next Wednesday was New, new Year's Eve. Eve. So, it's like, nah. <laughs> nah, dog. Nah, brah. Nah, brah. Uh, so that's that. Yeah. Uh, but now we're back, and there's uh, apparently there's lots of stuff to talk oh, about. Oh yeah, it's, well I mean it's been three weeks. <laughs> apparently, of course there's gonna be stuff to talk about. Uh, the the first big thing out of Marvel Studios mm -hmm. is the Ant Man trailer. Ant Man, and, and and not so much. I feel like it's not so much because Ant Man's coming out. Everybody knew Ant Man was coming out. Uh, that's followed the Marvel universe, and then the other thing was that everyone knows that Edgar Wright is no longer directing it or was no longer directing it, which is disappointing because that was part of the reason people were excited for it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Ant-Man isn't a very big character, so it's kind of hard to get excited about him. That's, but, I mean, that's you, the same did thing. Do, did you do that purposefully? What do you mean? He's not a very big character. Oh! I did not, actually, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> um, but uh, he... It's, you know, when, when Edgar Wright was attached, it, it was pretty exciting. But but then again, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy has shown that you don't need a... And I mean, here's the thing. It was obvious before Guardians of the Galaxy that you didn't need a big name, like, group or characters or anything like that. What, to like make a Iron Man? Film. Yeah, like Iron Man works because Iron Man was a good film. And by all accounts, everyone thought that Iron Man was going to kind of suck. Because if you've read the comic books, same with Captain America. They kind of had really strong starts, you know, in the in the Gold and Silver Ages, respectively. And then, you know, kind of well, in the Bronze Age in the 80s know, and 90s, it was just kind of... Eh. People knew of Iron Man, I think, perhaps more from the Black Sabbath song than from having been readers of Marvel Comics. <laughs> Um, people knew of Iron Man in that sense, uh, but the, l let me let me assure you, as someone who's uh, who's not wearing rose tinted glasses about the past and concerning Iron Man, Iron Man was not really always a a, a big tentpole character for no, Marvel. No, not no. Um, I mean, and, and prior he... to prior to the film, he was not what you would call like a slam dunk character. No, you know no, who no, you know no. who was a slam dunk character, by all accounts, like. Like for the better part of Marvel history, hmm. the Incredible Hulk. Right. The Incredible Hulk's a slam dunk character. Name recognition with the man on the street. He did have a TV pop show cultural recognition. Well, that's I'm not saying that there's not reasons that he wasn't right, that. Right, right, right. There were, but I mean, it, it, yeah. If, if if we're talking overall recognition, then Iron Man was pretty much relegated to comic books, and that was. I mean, it. there was an Iron Man series of t cartoons on Fox in the '90s. Like kind of like uh, that were not very good. They were all. not. They were they not were awful. <laughs> also, uh, the man. And, and speaking of uh, of them not man. Now that you think about it, they really have never had a really strong handle in the Mandarin outside of the comics. No, the Mandarin in the cartoon was terrible. Too. He was like a he was like a green skinned like he was like, like a, a he was he was Doctor Doom. Because he was Doctor basically Doom, Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is like technology and magic <coughs> like meshed together. Sure. And Mandarin was never like that. Mandarin was always magic, first and foremost, you know? Well, yeah, pretty much. Pretty alien much. magic. But yeah, you know, alien, alien technology that's basically magic, but yeah. So, so yeah, so, you know, it, it, we're, we're learning now, you don't need an established character no. or a character that's in the popular consciousness to make a good movie, but still... It's got to be really hard to make an Ant-Man movie. And actually, I was talking to my dad uh, moments before we started the show here, and he said that the you know because I was like, oh, the older guy, uh, Michael Douglas in the trailer, that's Hank Pym, because we've known that for a while too. Which is you know like with all the leaked information and stuff, like the trailers aren't even exciting anymore, really. I've, it, there it, it's going to implode at some point, but I, I don't need to keep pointing that out. 
everyone knows that you know the, the shared universe is going to hit a snag at some point and here's the thing okay mm -hmm. I'm gonna i'm gonna go back into what i was saying and then i'm gonna jump on that tangent because it's an important one but um my dad said it was a lot like owlman from watchmen mm -hmm. where you have like the older person who was that hero and then they take like a younger person sure. in as their mentor and, and you know that's that's classic comic book anyways but just but, the way that it is no he's an inventor i'm wondering know. if hank pym in this continuity will have ever been ant-man before do you think maybe he made the suit but he was like worried about I'm using too, it i'm too, I'm too old. old yeah i can see that. how are you doing sheriff hold i'm feeling hold yeah uh, but, but uh yeah yeah <laughs> old <laughs> uh but uh but yeah no michael douglas um it's interesting you know that they're that they're taking the, well because first off if you were to, to ask uh like a, a busy like uh city square in like let's just say times square in new york you're standing on times square in new york you're okay. like have you heard of ant-man have you heard of Ant-Man? You know, um, you're, you're going to get kind of like low numbers to start with. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then you take those. Mm hmm Okay. And you say, uh, what is Ant-Man's secret identity? Or, 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 okay, hold on. If you say, do you know Ant-Man's secret identity? Mm -hmm. And then you have an even smaller number of people who, who have not only heard of, of Ant-Man. But also know Hank Pym. They know, they know, they know Ant-Man. They know that Ant-Man has, what Ant-Man's secret identity is. Then you take those people and say, "What is Hank? Or what was it? What is Ant-Man's secret identity?" And then the vast, overwhelming majority of those people they're gonna say Hank Pym. will say Hank Pym, not Scott Lang. Oh, uh, Tone Man Rules just corrected me. He said Night Owl, not Owlman. Owlman. Yes. That is true. Owlman is Batman's uh, alternate uh, crime syndicate uh, alternate. That's true. From from the crime syndicate universe with uh, Omni Man and. Uh, that was Ultraman. Or Ultraman and Power Ring. Power Ring, uh, Speedster. Speedster. You sure it was Speedster? No. <laughs> it wasn't Zoom. It wasn't Speedster. Was, who was, was it, it Johnny Quick? Yeah. Johnny Quick. Johnny Quick. Johnny Quick. CSA. That's a sweet name, by the way. Yeah. Kind of, not to make a huge tangent here, but Johnny Anything. Yeah. Is is like a sweet it's fucking classic handle. Americana. Johnny, Johnny Two something. Guns. Yeah. Fucking Johnny, Johnny Muscles. Johnny Muscles. That sounds more like mafia, but <laughs> listen, a lot of these are gonna be mafia ass names. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny anything. But Johnny Quick. Um. But no. Uh. Okay. Jumping back into my tangent, sure. I feel like this is. So we have Ant Man coming up this year. We have Captain America three. Wait, is that next year or this year? That's next year, dude. Next year we have yeah, Avengers two. We have Ant Man. We I don't have... even know if it's next year. It might be the year after that. I think actually. Is the Spider Man the new Spider Man movie coming out this year? No, they don't know what they're doing for the next uh, one. That's right, because they were talking to Marvel. Like, you want to do something, uh, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> um, there, are, there are a few movies scheduled at least. I know there's a lot this year, the next year. And Avengers so and Ant Man are like the the big the two big here. Big Marvel, and then the, there's Batman versus Superman coming up this summer too. Yep. Um, but but. My uh, my point being is is that Marvel hasn't really failed so far. Mm -hmm. The mo the closest you can get to failure for Marvel would probably be like the Incredible Hulk, but I feel like that was before Avengers. I feel like Avengers was the point where they started launching all the other movies mm -hmm. because it was pretty you know it was exciting to hear about the Avengers movie because they hadn't announced the Avengers movie even by you know by the Hulk. You had right. an idea. But they, but they weren't going to say right out, oh, we're doing Avengers. Wasn't they would, the they, tease, wasn't the tease an Incredible Hulk where... It was at the end with Thunderbolt Ross. And, and uh, Tony Stark went and talked to Thunderbolt Ross about Avenger it was either, stuff. It was, yeah, it was either Tony Stark or... It was, it was, I'm pretty sure was it was Tony Stark. Sure I always it remember Tony. it as uh, Nick Fury. Well, that was in the other one. It was, yeah, it was in the Iron Man one. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, so they were doing those at the end of the credits and it was like, oh shit, they're like, they're working at you. That was really the only information you had. And then eventually they, you know, threw down the trailer for the Avengers. It's like, holy shit, Avengers did really well. But now they're, I mean, with this, actually I saw a cracked video earlier that was making fun of the Ant-Man teaser trailer. Cause they had the ant-sized trailer, which was like, 
like a tiny little thumbnail in the middle of the the video window mm -hmm. and then when agent carter carter came out i think yesterday then they released the ant-man trailer alongside that and then they put it online so then they had the regular Ant-Man trailer, which seemed all right. I feel like Paul Rudd was really reserved. And that's just from the trailer. They He's could playing easily against cut it. type. He's yeah. playing against absolutely. type. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, well, the first thing that he says is a joke, basically. Or he's like, all right. <laughs> or, or something like that. Or... All right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so uh, it was very Paul Rudd what so, he said, but yeah, the whole like first minute and a half of the of the trailer, he's just standing around looking stoic, which is not what something you get Paul Rudd for. No, it's not a Paul Rudd thing. But oh, oh, to end my tangent, I'm basically saying that the movie studios always plan according to their last movie. We can see that with Spider Man. And, you know, it might just be Sony, because Sony fucking, you know, jump ship every time something goes wrong. Like, every time. Like, they'll they'll put all of their eggs in one basket, and if that basket falls, then, you know, they're not, they're not going to stick around and pick up the pieces. They're just going to get another basket to throw all their they eggs in. They lack conviction. Yeah. Well, that's any movie studio, and What that's my do point. you believe in, <laughs> Sony? Sony? Yeah. When so, wait a minute, it wasn't... Never mind. <laughs> So, so Amazing Spider-Man 2 didn't do all that well critically. Uh, I know worldwide it did really well. And I know a lot of people were touting those numbers too where it was like, oh, well, you know, you might not like this Drek, but the rest of the world does because the rest of the world doesn't care about, like, the little things in the movie, you know. It mm -hmm. matters how it does globally. Which I feel is kind of bullshit because the other thing a lot of people lean on numbers-wise is uh, home video on DVD and Blu-ray and all that. Is that like, oh, it doesn't matter how it does in the theater. It only matters how we sell it afterwards, you know, because that's where all the big money is. I mean, Kevin Smith has basically stood up on stage and said that, like, you know, Mallrats and Chasing Amy and pretty much all the Kevin Smith movies didn't do very well box office wise. But they kicked a whole lot of ass on home video because they were all cult films, you mm -hmm. know. So I guess my point is, is that the minute one of the Marvel movies absolutely fails, which is a possibility. I mean, they'll have people go out to see it. But if it's critically panned, people will wait until it comes on video. And even then, you know, like, you're going to have your people that want to collect it for the Marvel Universe sure. video series. Everyone's going to have their, like, personal collection. Can I tell you Marvel something? Movies. What's Speaking that? of that, uh -huh. uh, and, and trying to trying to break this 15-minute uh, tangent that you've got <laughs> going on here. Uh, no, seriously. Uh, I, I have almost all of the Marvel movies. Except... Except for mm -hmm. Iron Man 3. I refuse to buy it. I'm right. not going to buy it. I don't want it. Oh, wow. Someone's going to have to literally buy it for me as a gift. And I'm going <laughs> to say, ah, okay. If I find it on the side of the road, like somebody threw it out of their car, I will give it to you. And then you can put that in your collection and people will be like, why well, is that all busted up? It's like, because well, I don't here's, shit about Here's it. another problem. <laughs> here's another thing that I think we didn't like talk about enough as a problem mm -hmm. in our review. In our famous Jake and Trev review everything Iron Man 3 review. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Um, we didn't talk about how uh, that one was the biggest shill in the international market, uh, far and away above any, because it literally included additional we, no, content. We did. And we well, did. We spoke about it briefly, and we cut most of what we talked about for for length for length we, of the episode. We, but we we put a mention of it in there with we we had the clip of the doctor working on Iron Man. Oh uh, yeah, the yeah. Chinese doctor. Well, I, I was just thinking about that. Like, where do where does that like, apparently, by the way, a lot of ch uh, Chinese uh, moviegoers hated that. Yeah, yeah. Because it was super obvious that this didn't belong in this movie. It'd it's be like, like watching a Bollywood movie and then they break into song and dance about guns and cheeseburgers. Just for us. <laughs> well, what I had thought of was uh, 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 if they started doing it for like like every other country. So then like to appeal to the English market, you got like Thor sitting there eating a can of like York of Yorkshire pudding or spotted dick or something like that from you know and it's like well what the fuck why is he eating that that's not a thing that people eat yeah it's like it's oh, jolly good fucking <laughs> fucking he's got like, jelly babies iron man well there know? well the the scene in question was two doctors talking about iron man two chinese doctors that were doing the surgery on iron man to remove the shrapnel from his heart but the characters are never introduced at any other point in the movie, like, except like, for that. It was part of the epilogue. 
Which, you know, it's like, who gives a shit? Let's finish this movie already. Yeah, it, it was... was... It was ha- so ham-fisted. It was just fucking hammered in there. There was no reason for it to be there. I remember watching it and being like, why? Like, it, it is pandering, plain and simple. It was the most... It was the most obvious pandering there has ever been oh, yeah absolutely in a marvel movie at the absolutely. very least if not absolutely in in recent years in general movies so i'm hoping that marvel really has learned their lesson we haven't heard of any big egregious like uh pandering no. moments like that since then uh the biggest part of like marvel international things is is that apparently the uh the taiwanese name for guardians of the galaxy was uh was uh super like something like a super unusual attacking team or something like that which i can't i can't be mad at that uh no so su- <laughs> it was a u- unusual universal attacking team or something like that because they didn't have that's also still super that, awesome that's 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 what they're an attacking team but uh that's what they do to cap off my tangent oh it's my God, I, i'm getting to, to it i'm getting to it. to break it <laughs> as soon as marvel studios releases a flop <laughs> They're going to start dropping their movies like Ballast. Sure. Because the whole... I, I, I mean, think about this. If you, if you were in a business and you... you Like, let's, let's say you had a pawn shop and you were buying a bunch of stuff and then selling it for a profit and then you bought something but then you lost money on it but you lost a fair amount of money on it. Mm-hmm. Like... See, that's the, the difference is, is that you or I would just be like, well, I guess we just gotta, you know try harder next time to make sure that we're finding stuff that people want Mm -hmm. instead of not buying anything ever again you know what i mean like it's 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 one of those things where they're gonna panic they're gonna panic that they'll panic but uh, i don't know man i feel like they would really need to have a couple of flops in a row for them to give it consider like yeah. shelving things or, or well, the, or, the supports are pretty rickety as it is because uh you know robert downey jr is already talking about getting out of the game he's a huge player in the avengers mm-hmm. you know they he wanted obviously he wanted to quit after three and they reeled him back in for a second avengers movie he might not even play a huge part in that i mean well he does play he has to play a huge part in it considering but you know what i mean like i i feel like that and i know like a bunch of other cast members are talking about you know like how long is this going to go on how many more movies can you do you know they're talking about recasting iron man i know was being thrown around there for a while like robert downey jr ought to be really careful about biting he ought to be the hand the thankful <laughs> yeah about, about biting the hand that feeds because you know what robert and i know you're watching like as every, you do as everybody else does everyone in the world watches the show robert you're not such a special magical snowflake that you personally are the reason why everyone loves you because we all had that opportunity to really love you before and we declined um (laughs) mostly because of your bad behavior but i'm I'm just saying you're not untouchable you know this isn't de facto you you made a very some very charming movies upon your return uh from uh being a space cadet yeah. And that's really nice, but it could just as easily go the other way. And you are a star again because of Marvel, so I wouldn't be so quick to try to move beyond Marvel. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm no, saying. No, no, no. I, I, I could see that. I could see that. But but I'm curious to see when it's going to break down, because they can't keep... I mean, there are movies scheduled up in 2020. Have, sure. Well, I mean, they already have another Iron Man. I mean, they already have another like character of that type. Star-Lord. They already have, like, a Star-Lord fucking, like, you know, snarky, you know, cool guy. But how, how are audiences going to feel about, like, Annihilation? Well, that's... <laughs> who That's... I, I mean, so we're getting... We're getting... I'm, we're I'm, getting I'm, It's going to be interesting to see how... how the uh, third movie is going to be the Infinity Gauntlet. We already know that. Sure. So we're getting Ultron, Infinity Gauntlet. What would come after that? Sure. No, I hear you. We're already getting Civil War. Annihilation, sure, is, is, is pretty, you know. Yeah. Uh, scroll Invasion. You can get a Scroll Invasion series going. Anyway, um, so yeah, okay. I don't think that would work too well, I'll oh. tell you what. Well, let's, let's try something here. Uh-huh. Because there's lots of little bits of news and shit that, uh, that we could talk about, but I don't care. And I don't <laughs> think you care. And if I'm wrong, you go ahead and tell me what you want us to talk about. Uh, and until then, we're just going to talk about whatever. Because fuck it. Uh, and it's our show. 
So, suck a dick. <laughs> wait, what? So, S and D. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Tell me and ask this a couple questions here. Let's address those first. Fine. Uh, he said there's an episode of Parks and Rec, the setup, that predicts Leslie's triplets. I did not know that. Uh, he said, what other Easter eggs have you noticed in movies and TV off the top of your head? Um... Easter eggs like like recent TV show. I mean, there are a lot of Easter eggs in TV shows. I mean, obviously you have like the psych pineapple, mm -hmm. you know, pineapple in every episode. You have, you know, there there are all sorts of little tells and things in in, in television shows. Thing. Is it an Easter egg if you're waiting for it? Like if you know that there are basically like a horde of fanboys and girls who are just going to comb over the whole thing looking for references. Kind of like S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. drops a few things in their episodes. Yeah, it's it's pretty frequent, like, where it's like, oh, he's a bad guy to this guy, you know? Yeah. Like, like, you know, there was a, there was a, like, a, a, a genius uh, who was in the S.H.I.E.L.D. Academy who was doing some kind of science experiment with, like, an ice machine or whatever, basically, like a, like a free, like, a weather machine, and he ended up getting uh, ice powers. And he's some kind of Marvel evil ice guy mm. that's, like, legit from the comics. But he's so unimportant that I don't even remember who it is. It wasn't Icicle or... Was it or... Blizzard or... It might have been Blizzard. Because it wasn't Icicle or uh, Mister F... or Ca Captain Cold or Mr. Freeze. Because all three of those were from the DC universe. Right, right. <laughs> all three ice guys I'm, from the DC universe. I'm pretty sure it's Blizzard, but it's like Don, <laughs> Donnie O'Malley or something like uh. that. And... <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, so the, so Easter eggs. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's that's racist as fuck. What? You said Donnie O'Malley, Ice Guy. I was thinking McSickle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awful. That's terrible. <laughs> um, but other Easter eggs, uh, I don't know. I'm glossing over that. Let's just no. move right along, uh, Tone Man. Um, I don't know, I'm really bad at watching uh, television for that stuff. Most of what I watch in TV oh, is oh. genre television. There is one. So I There is one off the top of my head. Community, in the, um, the latest season of Community, when Troy leaves, because um, uh, Chevy Chase's character dies. And then uh, Troy, Donald Glover, uh, decides to uh, leave, and I, I think he, like, goes off to explore the world or do whatever, and um, Chevy Chase's character bequeaths him a boat, and he leaves with the boat on a trailer, and on the back of the boat, the name of the boat is the Childish Gambino, and, they, and they're basically, like, making reference to the fact that Donald Glover is leaving the show to, to, be, Childish to be Childish Gambino. So they kind of they kind of reference that. I remember that. I, the, that was more recent, I guess. Um, a lot of things. A lot of people leaving that show kind of ruined that show. Um, and I, I'm excited to see how it turns out on Yahoo. <laughs> right? Like, I, oh, I can't remember if it was an article or not, but somebody was talking about how television is reaching another point where it's just going to be fucked again. Mm -hmm. it's the chaos of, of of creating a new medium when you have streaming television or 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 subscription television everyone's going to try to do that and it's not going to work out so well netflix has somehow weathered so many years where so many studios or channels like pulled their stuff and then brought it back, or Netflix got more movies and shows from, like, other places. Um, I know, like, HBO Go is now talking about being without, like, you can get it without a subscription to HBO, which is going to make them a bajillion dollars, you know? Well, basically, every distribution company that has, like, content to sell is basically having to make this choice. Do I want a lot of money... By giving my content, or by licensing my content to Netflix to stream. Yeah. Or do I want to try to go, or do I want to try to go double or nothing? <laughs> yeah. And do, my own, like... and, and do my own streaming service where people can pay me directly to stream my content. Yeah. I know. And we... then I get all the money. <laughs> yeah. That it, which is funny you mention that because I keep saying I, I liked, um, um, uh, oh, what is it, um. Uh, the company that made 
Puppet Master. Full Moon. Full Moon. Full Moon Studios has their own streaming service. It's like, listen, Full Moon. You guys you, have, like, 50 movies. You just don't have <laughs> enough content for this. Yeah. Like, if it, it... And that's the thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a fair amount of Full Moon movies that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. But then, like, just like in our arcade episode, uh, Jake and Trevor review everything arcade. Check that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's two plugs. That's two. <laughs> that's the deuce. Um, yeah, they, they, there's not a whole lot. So is every company going to do that? Like, I feel like they could easily take the full moon movies and just put them on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Like they would make a bajillion dollars mm-hmm. and they sell their own mm-hmm. products too. They, they have like puppet master dolls, which I'd love to have a Jack. That would be sweet. Like full size. Dude, yeah. <laughs> That'd be sweet. sweet. But, um, yeah, but then they have, you know, like evil bong. Or Ginger Dead Man. <laughs> so it's all this, it's it's like, who's going to pay? And and I think it's like a yearly cost, too. Like, if you think about so, Hulu, it's like monthly, I, you know Netflix what? is I monthly. I just don't, you're just not it's thinking literally, through. The, it's the, literally the same cost of Hulu every month to watch just Full Moon videos. Listen, it's kind of like <laughs> when magazines, you know? Yeah, I guess there are some families who, like, like receive subscriptions for like four or five different magazines that come to them every week. How many of those do you actually read? Right. And how many people do you know that actually do that? I think, I think this is like, this is an old way of thinking that this is a uh, 20, this is 2005 thinking that they're still engaged in oh, here yeah. Oh, yeah. is, is that, you know, they feel like they're not really out of the wild west yet. So if they, Hurry up and set set up their infrastructure before civilization comes out well, here. Well, think about think about all the big They'll changes. They'll still be able to carve out I mean, a piece. I mean, Blockbuster went under because they tried to they dumped all their money into trying to be like Netflix. It's like, sorry, we already have a Netflix. And 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 at that point, if you if you remember correctly, Netflix was still a mail service. Right. You had to pick what DVDs you wanted, and they would send them to you in the mail, and you would send it back. Mm-hmm. I imagine they're so happy now that all they have to do is stream the videos. <laughs> like, they started off as a mail service, a mail rental service. Well, they still are. For Not a... like a rent boy service. Not like a mail rental service. Like, right. rental movies through the mail. Right. It's And it still is. <laughs> homonym but, problems. But, but Hashtag people, homonym problems. But most people <laughs> don't use those part of their services. Yeah. Well, when they started streaming, you know, it became less and less. And then it eventually it was just like, you can just watch this on your computer, who gives a shit? And then it was like, oh, you can just watch it on your Xbox. And then it was like, oh, you can watch it on your Roku. You and watch now it on have... everything! And now they have smart TVs, too. I, you know, in my day-to-day, I sell TVs. And so many older people ask me, like, oh, are there, like, TVs? Can I get this in, like, not a smart TV so it's less money? And it's like, that's basically standard at this point. Yeah. Like, after a certain size TV, the, all of them are smart TVs. I had someone come in the other day and ask us if we, uh, where our standard TVs were. And I just wanted to, like, put my hand on their shoulder and, and, and like, You say, mean, I'm like, s- a CR TV? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They're all flat screens, bro. They don't make those anymore. Yeah. Not here. I mean, they, I'm sure someone in the world is still manufacturing those. I'm certain. Yeah. But... We don't live there anymore. We don't. You can't go home. You can't go home. <laughs> this is what we have now, and it's this is the new way, brother. <laughs> yeah. You want to like? Like, why would you not want? You know, I had to. Oh, like, I I hate talking about work, but I had to lug a sixty inch TV out the other day for for a customer, and I did it by myself. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine fifteen years ago? Well, you had to, you had to, like all three other guys back there yeah. to like fucking pull that you out. You needed forklift. Oh man! Somebody'd have to get like a somebody'd have to rent a truck mm-hmm. to bring that home, and then they need three people at home to bring it in the house. <laughs> One of those huge rear projection TVs, sixty inches? Are you kidding me? So now you can toss that shit like a frisbee. <laughs> so, in uh, in what I now can I'm gonna call the non segue. Uh, I'm just going to start talking about something else entirely. Um, uh, the you may remember a while ago, I we were talking about uh, ideas for Marvel shows, um, because 
up till now, and we're going to get it, it's going to change here as more of these shows come out on Netflix. Like right now, we've had Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. We have Agent Carter, which premiered yesterday. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it yet. The, 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 I was actually going to watch the pilot. <laughs> But then I played some more Binding of Isaac. Okay. <laughs> Gotta uh, help myself. Sure. Hope but, uh, but uh, you know, and then we're going to have the Netflix ones like Daredevil, Luke Cage, and so on. Right. I thought Agent Carter was part of that whole Netflix deal. I thought it was, too. And it is Did not. it just switch over to ABC all of a sudden? I think it was just on ABC all of a sudden. That's really weird. Because that was, I remember specifically, that was, it was supposed to be Sharon Carter. Mm-hmm. And Luke Cage and Daredevil and Iron Fist. And, no. But in any case, uh, and we were talking about, because, you know, uh, DC has largely ruled the roost when it comes to uh, television, you know. Yeah. So we were talking about yeah. what kind of TV shows would be interesting. And I was thinking about it, and at the time I had said Exiles. Uh, Ooh. That would be good for the movie. Like, if, if Fox wasn't a bunch of dummies, that would be a really good X-Men premise. It would. Um, now, the thing is, of course, that if Marvel it, doesn't have if, the license. If well, you're no, not hold familiar, on. hold on. Well, hold on now. Right. Actually, this is an interesting question. Who has the who has the licensing rights for Marvel on television, or for X-Men on television? That's a, that is a really good question. I, I had to think about that. I don't right know. Because it could be... I feel like Fox has production rights for movies. Certainly, movies, but... But, but Marvel, is it like Marvel live produces... action filmed things in general or just movies? Because, because, well, did, like, Fox owns uh, X-Men and Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. Sony owns Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. There haven't been any live action things from any of those things mm -hmm. for television. It's only been the other stuff from the Marvel Universe. Sure. So, but, but yeah, the Exiles has a lot of characters that are from all over. Right. Well, and that's what's kind of really nice about them. And it thought occurred to me actually on the way over here while driving tonight mm -hmm. that you could tweak the premise around to not use mutants really easily. You know, call it something else, whatever. And, it, and functionally, oh, it would be that's a, it. hold that's on, a slippery slope. hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. And I know it would functionally be similar to sliders at that point, but hold on, bear with me. Mm -hmm. You have to have a lot of other... Because they're basically the premise of the Exiles is they go to different alternate universes and like try to deal with various situations. Yeah, yeah. Most and of their team is made up of alternate universe characters. Versions of different characters. Yeah. Like You got like Nightcrawler, you got... Yeah, you have, you have Storm from the universe where she would turn into a vampire, mm -hmm. uh, you know, shit like that. Yeah. You know, so... But what you could do with something like this is you could sort of field test different actors in a role. So, like, for example, you could have an alternate universe version of Tony Stark. Well, they right? had Arno Stark in The Exiles. Right. That was Tony Stark's dad, wasn't it? Oh, uh, like, like, grandson from an alternate future or something yeah. like that? but he was, like, steampunk, wasn't he? I don't remember. But anyway... I, I, I seem to, like, I think in that universe Tesla had, had won over oh, instead sweet. of... Something like that. Sure. It's it's been a while since I read that particular exile. So sure, so, but the point is is that so yeah you you get these different characters and whatnot and then they're not all mutants. Uh, but what's interesting is is that then you could kind of field test these actors, and if they do well enough in these roles or in associated roles, then you could bring those actors into play, the roles of retiring. You know, like mm -hmm. like RDJ is gonna go, so they get the kid that played that played Stark on the Exiles, up. They they promote him. See, you could and you could test for these different premises a little bit, and you know if anything really takes off, you know, like some character interactions and, and so forth. Yeah, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be bad. I I like the idea of Exiles as a TV show. As far as like a testing ground for characters, I feel like that would be tough because. We're just now seeing the effects of, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. is the first, like, cross-movie TV show. I mean, the, the, the earliest thing that I can think of is the Highlander TV show, where they actually had Connor McCloud and Duncan McCloud, which never they never explained that very well. Anyways, but, you know, you had characters from the movie, and then you had the TV show, which was basically, like, the same character, but a different guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know 
So I and and eventually he ended up in the movies too. At least he was in uh, Endgame, right? Right, and the one after that, like the order. Well, that or was something. like a. Made for TV. That, yeah, yeah. That was based off of like the TV show almost primarily, um, and it was also very, it was very, uh, ridiculous because they took a bunch of stuff. I mean, we could have discussions about Highlander forever, right? So forever, <laughs> we could have an immortal discussion about Highlander. Okay, so but, but yeah, so they they haven't really Shield is the the most recent example of having and, characters from a tv universe right and we and haven't movie. seen how that how yet that's going to really play out in the long term yeah i mean obviously i still haven't finished secondary the idea okay not exiles what if Uatu presents what if see that would like uh, amazing story style yeah like, like the week. yeah i'm 100 down for that 100 down. i love the anthology show so much oh. uh, there aren't any anymore Uatu, the watcher they just presents, don't exist. You know? the closest thing that i can remember that was kind of like that was uh eureka join me Uatu, the watcher as I gaze upon the infinite strata of the Marvel universes and ask, what if? Yeah, see, that would be fucking cool. <laughs> no, I, I, that is an awesome idea. Like you, I gotta hand you, it to you. You could have, like... Well, well could... done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's, no, that's, that would be sweet. Because that's too Marvel, obviously. Mm -hmm. Got a huge boner for Marvel. And anthology shows. Gotcha. I love the what if. I got him. I love. I you you got me hook line and sinker, sir. <laughs> I would the exiles. Eh, you know, not too bad. I do like sliders, so it's up there. Sure. But yeah. What no, if? What if? What if series? Marvel's Fucking... what if? Oh, yeah, man. absolutely. Even if they did, because I feel. And here's another thing. I feel like the animated movies do a really good job of being accessible to adults. I feel like there are a few cartoon i mean obviously i could quote like batman the animated series like mm -hmm. that is universally known as you know just as adult as it is for kids in fact there were some episodes that were not for kids but hey. i feel like the early 90s like the 90s in general oh, were a time shit. where you could just oh, have shit. Like, jake what if it was like uh like a like an adult animated series what if right mm -hmm. and then that way you could draw the fantastical possibilities and everything and not have to worry about going over budget because it's all just being drawn right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then you could still get like a lot of the big name actors in there to do, do the voices. voices yeah because it's not so as big of a commitment as actually showing up and doing filming and everything hey, yeah dude Marvel, <laughs> call <laughs> us. I know you're watching. We'll be EP. We'll EP that beat, show. Beat, beat me. Hmm? Call, call my beeper. Call, call his beeper. Send him some beeps. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got um, your mom and my dad are here. Uh, Hello, my, mom. My dad Hello, says, Dad. "Howdy, y'all." Uh, and he says, "We were talking about Avengers, like what you could do for plot lines." He said, uh, "Zombie universe." But I feel like that goes along. I feel like that goes along with What If and Exiles. Sure. In fact, I think uh, Marvel Zombies three or four had like a team very much like the Exiles, where it was like Quicksilver's daughter. She was like a gun gunslinger in the mm -hmm. old west, and had like Howard the Duck, and I think Machine Man showed up for that team too. Um, and it was just like a ragtag team of people from different universes that were stemming the zombie tide. They were like Exile Zombie Edition. Which is pretty interesting. I feel like a lot of people... This is the thing. I, I don't think zombies would ever reach the actual Avengers universe. No. Because the Marvel Zombies kick, when when it came out, there were two things it had going for it. One was that people were really getting huge boners for zombies. Enormous ones. Yeah, that, that was like Left 4 Dead. That was like... You know, it was everything, everything zombie was happening at that time. So for Marvel to do a zombies thing, it worked very well. And the other thing was, is the cover art. The actual series, if you've read it, especially the the very first Marvel Universe oh, it series. Was, it was really great because they used all these classic covers from, and like art from like these, yeah. like, uh, these seminal uh, issues have, of like some of the classics. Oh, it must be in and, and then they they do some like zombified version of that. Yeah, it you looked know, really awesome. Cover. The I can't remember the artist's name right now, but yeah, he was huge. He's mm -hmm. still huge. Like he he makes really good covers, even if they're not zombies. 
but he was known for like he did like variant covers for other series that were like the zombie. Like version I seem to recall, of... one of them was like a was like a Days of Future Past like uh, send up. Like, yeah, you know, like, it had it had um, it's that classic where you know you have Wolverine like in the spotlight and, and you have all the, the wanted posters like yeah. behind him and shit like that. Well, they had one for like that for Army of Darkness versus Marvel Zombies. Okay, where it was it was Ash and he's standing there with the with the chainsaw arm, you know, and mm-hmm. the shotgun, and then it's got uh, the posters on the back say like Eaton. You know, cannibalized. You know, right, like all right. these people are turned into zombies. Sweet. It was awesome, but but yeah, that that was during a time when zombies were huge. I don't think you could get away with that cinematically. I feel like, um, uh, what was the zombie movie that came out with Brad Pitt? What was it called? Oh, uh, World War Z. World War Z. Like, I feel like that was kind of the apex, mm-hmm. or at least the part, at least right after the oh apex, God. where it started going down a little bit. You know. You want to know why else one if makes sense as an animated property? What's it? Because Marvel still has all the rights to the animated stuff. There's never been a problem with like in like the recent years where like Spider Man shows up in the Avengers cartoon or or other um, uh, yeah. uh, Marvel characters show up in the Ultimate Spider Man cartoon. Oh yeah, absolutely. They do they do that shit all the time. My God. Yeah. What if animated series? Uh, Print it. Solid gold. Pay us. Pay us the money. <laughs> Um, let's see, let's see, your mom says, hello, uh, my dad says he wants to see the 2099 universe, uh, because of course he would. Oh, well, dude, I mean, there's a lot of really sweet shit going on in the 2099 universe. Um, like, Tone, Tone Man did you know that in the 2099 universe, there's a cult of Thor? There's like a, like a cult of uh, people who are like awaiting the return of Thor. And... That's awesome. That's fucking awesome! Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. Twenty ninety nine. I, I didn't. Doctor Doom. Twenty ninety nine. He's an anti hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Doom twenty ninety nine. I remember. And he might be the original Doctor Doom. Twenty ninety nine. And he might be the original Doctor Doom, or he might not be. It's indefinitive. <laughs> um, you choose your own adventure. And he had a couple things to talk about, and he wants to talk about Last Blood, which I haven't actually. I haven't heard anything about that, but we can look that up in a second. But uh, no, he also said Jake almost touched on it before Trev interrupted. Oh, but uh, the well, night... I have to try to get a few words in edgewise on the program. <laughs> I, I feel that has my name on it. I I, I feel like it's it's sure. it's definitely back and forth. Let's, sure, let's... sure. Well, you know, you you, you 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 spent a good amount of time going on your tangent today. I'm just That's, well, yeah, it's an idea. I'm not I'm not I'm not like butthurt about it or anything. I'm just you know. But uh, he said the '90s was a major game changer for cartoons. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, you know that's. It wasn't, it wasn't. It, it was a game changer because the the biggest thing that happened, I feel like, as far as cartoons, if you want to go into cartoon history, was Cartoon Cartoon. Mm-hmm. Because Cartoon Network, up until that point, was just Ted Turner's, like, dumping grounds for all the, like, TV shows that he got the rights to. So they would just show, like, reruns of old, you know... Uh, Oh, was it Z- Z- Xandar and the, Xandar, the, the, Space the Herculoids? Like the, the Herculoids, Space that's Ghost. what they are, the, the Herculoids. Um, yeah, Cartoon Network sucked. And then they had... They had um, a Triceratops that shot yeah, explosive had rocks. rocks out of its, out of like a tube on its head. It looked like it was ejaculating rocks out of its head dick, <laughs> is what it looked like. Is that Explicit. what it... Explicit. <laughs> is that what it looked like, you guys? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, they... And then... And then Cartoon Cartoon came out where it was like, okay, well, we want actual animators to come in and, and try their hand at it. And and that's where we got, like, Dexter's Laboratory and Powerpuff Girls and uh, Johnny Bravo, which launched the career of um, Seth MacFarlane, who went on to make Family Guy. I mean, there are a lot of artists. Gendy Tartofsky did Samurai Jack, which is hugely influential on a lot of animators today. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to talk about cartoons in general, if we're talking about Marvel and DC, if we're talking about comic book cartoons, then I feel like because of the comic book bust at the end of the 90s, they kind of had something going, especially with Batman. Yeah. But, but yeah, Iron Man sucked. I mean, the, the, the X-Men cartoon kind of petered the, out. The, uh, the, anime, the DC animated, the, the Dini-verse, as I've heard it called, after Paul Dini, who has been like a... A shepherd of like the the overall DC animated universe, which comprises uh, uh, the Batman animated series, uh, 
Superman, the Superman, the Adventures of Superman, the the Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and all those associated properties. All the people whose tor- torsos look like uh, <coughs> big V's or big triangles, all those upside guys, down triangles. All the all the <laughs> people in those worlds who look like they're all in the NFL, Just, yeah, like, like the world the shoulders, of NFL man. players. It's ridiculous. Shoulders as far as the eye can see. <laughs> so many shoulders. Um, but yeah. <laughs> No, it, it, the thing is, is that every, uh, cable channels are like, uh, Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> cable channels are like Pokemon, and, you know, at first they have some, some pretty standard attacks, you know. We'll, we'll rerun shows that were hits on their original channels, or have a cult following, or whatever, that we can l- group around, uh, a, an even vague, loose theme. Like, uh, like, for example... Yeah, DC was on Warner Brother or, or WB... Sure. Well, right. But, I mean, even, like, going farther than that, like, look at Cartoon Network in general. Okay, so, you know, like you said, uh, or or Spike in general. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, these are these are show they, they start out basically syndicating programs that already exist. Yeah. And then it's always a big deal when they have their first original series. Yeah. We yeah. have enough, we have enough push now to be able to make our own series. Yeah. We're going to show it, and you're going to love it. Yeah. And then and they aggressively, you know, advertise that. Mm-hmm. They put that on at all hours of the day because that's all money in their pocket. That's yeah. all money in their pocket, you right. know. Um, and, you know, and eventually, you know, these, these channels uh, start trying to offer more and more original content to feel like their own full-fledged channel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting seeing how that came together in the 90s, especially for Cartoon Network. Um, and same thing kind of happened in the late nineties, early two thousands for like Nickelodeon. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, ever since the nineties and even a little bit before that, of course they had their own projects, but, uh, watching how not only, uh, Nickelodeon, but, uh, Nick at night and also it's been off TV land have all evolved. Like TV land was supposed to be the replacement for Nick at night because Nick at night's old shows were all gone. And it's yeah, like, well, they started well now you can like, have your own channel with all yeah. with like Dick Van Dyke and stuff. Mm-hmm. And now, yeah. Dick, now TV land's got its own fucking original programming. It's like, how yeah. do you, how do you do that? How do you, yeah. how do you turn a show, a channel, which is, and you well, know, it's like MTV two. MTV two was for me. It's where videos. the music went. Yeah. And now it's not there anymore either. <laughs> yeah, MTV2 is the depository for all the reruns from MTV. <laughs> yeah, it's weird it's weird watching channels evolve like that. The WB has, you know, like they they've had a pretty pretty lockdown on the on the on the, the C- DC the CW. The C Oh god, the CW. The CW has has a lockdown on Canadian. No. Is that what it stands for? Canadian. Watch it. <laughs> CW. All of our shows are made in Toronto. Watch it, <laughs> or Vancouver. Yeah. I sound bitter. I don't know do why. You, do you think movie studios just can't figure out conversion rates, so they think it's cheaper to shoot there? <laughs> I think that the, the the Canadians are generally more accommodating. Like you know, and uh, as uh, from personal experience in playing with Canadian gamers, they are more sorry. Than, than uh, American gamers, so I, I I can see that they would probably be more willing to put up with traffic jams and like you know like oh this part of the city shut down because you're doing some fucking shooting <laughs> oh well I guess I'll I guess I'll go and do something else I'll sorry go, sorry I'll to bother go get you some Tim Hortons so, sorry to bother you film guys <laughs> you want some Tim bets so, oh, so, <laughs> give me Tim Tim, Tim bits. bits oh my god. Uh yeah, wow. Uh, let's see. My dad says, "Well, let's 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 talk about oh. Rambo here for a minute too." Sure, uh, yeah, let's do that. What, what were you gonna say though? Well, I was gonna say, uh, the other side, half of of uh, of uh, of this I never got around to asking uh, you mm-hmm. is I wanted you to pitch to me uh-huh. uh, a Marvel television show with lots of possibilities. <laughs> see, and... see, what if kind of tops everything. I win. Yeah, you can't. You can't do beyond. Okay. I mean, so you know what the Marvel release schedule for the next few years is going to be. Uh huh. What Marvel property have they sorely overlooked up to this point, Jake? Think about that for a moment. But well, obviously, I I feel like Wasp is a big character that they just kind of an aside. Wasp, they've been. <sighs> Because that was kind of the understanding. Even when they started talking about Avengers, everyone was like, oh, they're going to have Ant-Man and Wasp. 
They but, got him. But then they were like, well, let's just do Black Widow and Hawkeye because we already have them from two separate movies. Which was smart on their part. I feel like that did work out pretty well. No matter how much... Like, I'm not a huge Hawkeye fan, and I think Black Widow is good, but, you know, I don't think she could carry her own movie because then it would just be, like, super spy thing. And how many movies has What's-Her-Face been in that were exactly like a Black Widow movie would be? Yeah. Like Lucy. Like in the last year. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Lucy. Exactly. Or, like, um... No, there was another one that came out last year, too. Skill Joe. Yeah. Damn you, Skojo! But, um, characters they've neglected for, from the Marvel Universe, excluding uh, Spider-Man and X-Men. Um, like, big characters? I don't know. Like, the Avengers are a really big part of the Marvel Universe. So, so there's that. Um, I mean, I could say villains up and down, but... okay. Put that on the back burner then, and let me give you another question that's related. Okay. Okay. So, the Marvel decides that they need to get back one of their villains that are part and parcel with one of their properties they sign to another studio. Okay. Do they get Doctor Doom from the Fantastic Four, or do they get Norman Osborn from Spider-Man? Which do you think would be a, a bigger get I feel like there's only one right answer. This is not opinion based. <laughs> you this don't is think a, so? this is a fact based question. Well, I feel like they missed the boat with Norman Osborn for Iron Man three mm -hmm. because I remember like I remember what I I mean you could probably go back. I couldn't tell you at all which episode of Jake and Trevor V Everything Alive it was, but I remember us talking about the trailer. I remember there was a trailer roundup where we were talking about the trailer for Iron Man three. And everything we predicted was 100% wrong. And I think it shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. Like Extremis, um, Norman Osborn, you know, like obviously they couldn't use Norman Osborn, but that would have made sense uh, to have him there. I think having him take over, you know, like S.H.I.E.L.D. or, or, or Stark's shit or, or whatever, you know. But I gotta say Doom. I, yeah. gotta, I gotta go with Doom because I feel like they already fucked up the Mandarin, and no matter... It sounds like they're going to try to bring him back in his proper form. You know. But Doom is such a badass. He's got his own country. He does deal with super teams a lot. Like, he was originally a Fantastic Four character. But I, I feel like in the Marvel Universe now, Doom Doom is a big name. He's he's always... He's, he's an arch villain. He's not just a scheming dude. He's not just robbing banks and figuring out w ways to take over the world he's he's got a country to run mm -hmm. oftentimes when the world is at stake he's like the first guy to turn over and say all right we need to work together like you know he's he's it, it's not like the other way around where the heroes are like listen we need to put aside our differences because it's always the heroes that say that right mm -hmm. but with doom doom is usually one of the first people that's like all right petty differences aside you know the world needs a saving right he's 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 a villain in ideals only. He's, he's, he's a sort of magneto-esque yeah in that in that you know he's not just a, a total maniac and that when like you said yeah when the world is at stake or the chips are really down you can count on him to be counted among the good guys so to speak could could you say that he's like an anti-hitler or like an anti, like he's an anti-dictator, I guess. He's like an anti-Red Skull. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, because he 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 runs his country with an iron fist, but most of the people in his country are totally cool with it because they have so many benefits over, you know. It's it's not like actual dictatorships in the world where you know everyone's just kind of going along with it so they don't get killed. Like you know, all of the infractions in. Latveria probably result in death. <laughs> you know, like... But the trains run on time <laughs> in Latveria. Well, he takes care of his unless, people, and a lot of the, a unless lot of the, the people... the conductor broke one of the many rules and was put to death by a Doombot this morning. <laughs> but, Just but saying. like, half the, like, at, at least in a lot of the de depictions of Latveria, he's, he's fair, though. 
Like, a lot of his shit is kind of... Re- it, it feels like, depending on what writer you get, it's either, yeah, like a nightmare dictatorship where everyone lives in, like, filth. Like, it literally looks like medieval, like, serfdom. Sure. Or, or you get kind of the thing where it's like, well, he provides, like, machinery and magic to the people so that their lives are, like, totally well, sweet, you if you listen, if you look at the history in the comics, basically Latveria was a real shithole before Doctor Doom took control. Yeah. There was some baron who was just, like, just the worst. Yeah. And so even though he's a crazy, powerful dictator and everything, uh, you know, arguably he keeps his people fed. I'm sure there have been storylines where they've talked about how he abuses his people and everything like that. Yeah. But generally, I seem to recall that the people of Latveria hold highly highly favorable views on Doctor Doom. Yeah. And sure, you could argue that they pretty much have to. Yeah, but, but, on, but on the other hand, I mean... They... I think it's more interesting, frankly, it's more interesting from the purpose of the character if they if a good amount of the people in Latveria are genuinely satisfied with how Doctor Doom runs his shit. I feel, I feel like more often it's the good writers who turn Latveria into kind of uh, one step away from um, like a utopia. Sure. You know, and it's the bad writers who just lean on, on the, the whole it's a shitty third world country that he doesn't give a shit about. Right. So the, it, because it's more interesting that way when you have a villain who's, who's a dictator of his own country, he's mastered machine and magic. You know, like, Mm -hmm. and you, you see him as a multifaceted character who cares about his people. You know, he's not a complete asshole to everyone. He's only a complete asshole to the rest of the world. I mean, if you look at it from, if you're a good writer and you can look at Doom from Doom's point of view, where the rest of the world is stopping him Mm -hmm. from A, doing what he wants and B, taking care of his people, you know, then, Mm -hmm. then you come up with a, a more realistic character than just ha 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 i'm here to foil the fantastic four you know right okay so i I work with a guy and and, and jake works with him too who who is basically dr doom's hype man like like, like, every day comes up to me is like i was reading this comic and this is what doom said (laughs) yeah yeah no but it's always some like real like ice cold shit Oh yeah. Like like he was telling me about uh in and spoiler alert if you're really interested in what happened in in in, in Marvel Comics with the concerning the Fantastic 4 in the last few years, you know, go ahead, spoiler alert. But Johnny Storm's dead in the comics or he might even be I back like, by now. I feel like a member of the Fantastic 4 dies every couple of yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, he, he might be back by now. But at yeah. the time he had died and <laughs> Dr. Doom uh, confronts... Or like, uh, ben Grimm, it, it, Ben Grimm, right? Right, right. He's, Dr. Doom is talking to Ben Grimm uh, about uh, about what happened, and apparently, like, Johnny Storm is already in tears, and, and Doc Doom... Or Ben comes, Grimm. Ben or, yeah, excuse me. Ben, ben Grimm is already in tears because Johnny's dead. Yeah. And and Doc Doom kind of, like, comes up to him and is like, uh, is it... Is it true, what I heard? That that you... That you were you were there... You were right there when it happened, and you didn't lift a finger to stop it. You 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 didn't move at all. How brave. How very <laughs> brave. <Yeah. laughs> Just like ice cold shit, you know? Like yeah. it's fucking great. Or uh or he's talking about his Doom bots to some people. Who are like, What's with you and the Doom bots? And he's like, Well, I'm creating a legend. See, now any time that, that I'm easily beaten or one of my my plans fails you know, someone in the community says, "Oh, it was probably just a doom bot," or vice versa. When when one of my when when something goes like really right, and like one of my doom bots like fucks some shit up for a while, and then you know you guys assume that obviously it must have it been must me. Have been doom. You might not be talking to me at all right now. I might be a doom bot <laughs> talking to you, <laughs> telling you all this shit because I was programmed to by a genius. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You never know when you'll have defeated me because I'm everywhere. You yeah, know, no, it's absolutely. fucking, it's it's fucking sick, dude. Yeah, no, Doom, Doom is a brilliant character, and I would love to see like an actual. N- nobody's properly put Doom on film. Yet. Oh my god, because I'm so scared, oh, Jake. I'm so scared for the Fantastic Four movie. I'm, I'm I'm so worried about how they're gonna ruin Doom. Because here's the thing, 
arguably, and not even inarguably, even not even arguably, he's a fantastic four villain. Yeah. But he's an arch villain. I feel like for yeah, like he's 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 a main. You know, you he's could, a universe villain. You he's like say, a Thanos. Yeah, you could Doctor say Galactus Doom. is is a Fantastic Four villain too, but we we know that's not the case. Doctor Doom can menace anybody and for at any time for any reason, and it's not inappropriate. Yeah, you have to remember that you know a lot of villains have their first appearances in certain comics, but they kind of become the universe's villain. Right. Kind of the same with the characters too. I mean, more villains, more so because. You know, when you're reading a comic called The Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man's going to be in every issue, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but the villains might not. And, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, what's his face? Solomon Grundy. Right. Solomon Grundy was a Flash villain. Or uh, Green Lantern. You see, I don't even remember. It was either Green Lantern or Flash. Uh, Green Lantern, because, uh, because his body was partially composed of wood. Uh, and he was... And he was... Can't. Yeah. So, yeah, Green Lantern has a lot of really esoteric uh, weaknesses. Can, can we be honest about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The color yellow? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Wood? Wood? It's like Superman. <sighs> magic. Yeah, really? yeah, magic? Soups, everybody's vulnerable to magic. Yeah, That's not even real. a fucking vulnerability. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, I mean, you know, like... The Marvel like Universe is poorer... For, the cinematic universe is poorer for lacking Doctor Doom. They're poorer for having split up all their stuff. But it's kind of hindsight. Because once Marvel kind of picked up, then you realize, well, shit, we're not going to get well, I mean, could you imagine in a movie. We're not going to get the X-Men in an Avengers movie. Here's it, the thing, it, though. Yeah. Anytime that there's like a discussion about ownership and, and whatnot by people who know exactly what the terms of those those deals are there's never a well we'll just have to wait until 2059 when when the <laughs> contract expires like all of these licensing rights are basically in perpetuity until they stop making movies for for the thing yeah, so like, basically, that, if, that's if how enough, Daredevil got got shifted back to Marvel. Right. So if enough years lapse where they don't make anything, then they don't, then they can't keep it. But Fox has literally made uh, uh, a Fantastic Four movie that they didn't release before to mainstream, just to keep Fantastic, to Four. keep that. So I mean, you know, <laughs> they didn't even release it. They made it for like three hundred thousand dollars. Right, and then they just shelved it. Yeah, that's awful. So that is that is a little bit over our hour there. Okay. Well. But uh, yeah, real quick, we're working on a new version of the site right now. Um, so starting February first, hopefully we'll have everything in order and the we'll have the new site up. So mm -hmm. that'll be cool. Um, you know, uh, check back with us next week for Jacob Review Everything Live. Um, yeah. And uh, keep an eye out for the future. We're going to have a lot of exciting stuff coming up. I should have said this at the beginning of the episode. Nobody's going to see this, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.